Right, so we're moving on to the next talk. Leia, may I ask you on stage? So, this is the result of a community survey, right? Done last year. Let me see if things are working. That's this is, that's not the first line. No, <laughs> but here's the clicker. <laughs> that's the first line. All right. You have a mic? Yeah. You're good. And it's, and it's working as well. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Lea. I'm a PhD student right now at uh, CISPA in Saarbrücken. And uh, I've been doing some work on self hosting because it's just interesting to me. And I think it's also interesting to all of you. So as we saw this morning, Nextcloud is a very mature product already. It has a broad set of applications. And because it's open source, uh, it also caters to a broad variety of different users. And uh, when someone decides to self-host their services, they always have to put in this extra little bit of work uh, as opposed to relying on a third party vendor to uh, host the services for them. And uh, I've been actually asking myself, like, what's driving people to commit to this uh, extra work? Um, and uh, we had this community survey last year with Daphne together. And I also talked to some uh, selected particip participants in one-on-one -on -one conversation and asked them about basically, you know, what motivates them to self-host their services and also uh, how they run their operations, how they secure their operations and all different kinds of uh, roadblocks that they might run into. So I talked to private users, I talked to commercial users, and I also talked to non-profit users. And I'm giving you now a very crisp and broad uh, overview of some preliminary results. So in terms of motivation, um, I think privacy um, is like one of the like most prom uh, prominent motivations for people uh, who are deciding to self-host. I think this is not really a surprise to anyone sitting here. But what was actually surprising to me a little bit is that cost saving also was a one driving factor. And there were even people who said that this was like more or less the only reason why they're doing this. Like the privacy aspect was at best secondary um, or they it was just not a reason for them at all. Then you also have like this independence and control basically is contributing factors that motivates people. Some people said that they are self-hosting because they want better security, so they don't trust uh, vendors uh, um, and they want everything under their own hood. And then you also have um, this educational aspect, so people you know, have this do-it-yourself mentality more or less, um, and they just have fun doing it and you know, just want to uh, educate themselves uh, while trying to provide their own services. Um, if you take a look at like basically the landscape of technical setup, it's also very broad. So some people are fine with giving away control, like be it on the software side or also on the hardware side, but that would be on the left-hand side here. And then there are also some people who really want everything under their own belt, so they want full control over both hardware and software. And if you then factor in basically um, the tech expertise that people have, um, it's again a broad spectrum. So we have people that are actually amateurs, like all of them are somewhat uh, affine to technology, um, but not everyone can be an expert. And this is actually um, data from the interviews that I got. Um, so the, the blue hearts would be private users, the squares are commercial people, and um, the, the, the round circles are non-profit uh, users. And uh, I don't have time to go over everything because we just have so a little time. Um, but like maybe one interesting thing is that expertise alone is not enough to basically predict uh, what setup people will go for. And um, it can even be an issue. So for example, if you consider on the bottom uh, right, um, you see that there are people that opt for like basically um, um, the maximum amount of hard and software control, although they might not be technically equipped to provide the service in that way. And then they also run into issues. So for example, networking was a nightmare for a lot of people who don't have the expertise and then also they might not be or might not feel equipped to secure the services um, 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 and they might not be confident confident in that basically so um, but they still decide to like for the maximum uh, control because maybe they um, they cannot afford to go uh, into a hosting service or also they want uh, to be independent and have like full privacy basically so some takeaways, um, like the self-hosting community is super broad. Um, it's even maybe more diverse than one might expect. So it's diverse uh, in the sets of um, different motivational factors, technical expertise, 
setups are very diverse, and because of that, you also have different, you know, security strategies that apply. And then also, in my understanding, it's crucial to, you know, get a sense of the distinct needs of the different user populations uh, in order to help them uh, run and secure their operations and. Uh, in a good fashion. So this is actually naturally challenging for any sort of software product, project. Um, but in my opinion, Nextcloud, because it's open source and because it has like a huge uh, active user base, it also has like distinct opportunities because people are actually eager to contribute. Like it can also be a contribution, for example, to take part in such a study. And um, this then can hopefully uh, streamline um, maybe uh, ways to make it more accessible for, for a broader user space. Thank you. Thanks, Leia. All right, so 